Good morning. Good morning. So good to be here. It's so good to be together. Just a few announcements, and then I want to share a little thank you as well today. We want to lift up Ramona Gilbert's family. She um, died on Wednesday evening. Her funeral is tomorrow here at 1 p.m. with visitation at the funeral home this afternoon from 2 to 4. The annual reports are here. Annual meeting next week following worship. Please pick an annual report up and remind a friend or neighbor that they're available. So we'll be ready to have a smooth and not too long annual meeting next week. Thank you for being glad about wearing masks, especially when you're singing. We have higher cases again and a few vulnerable people in our midst. And I will be among those soon. Um, the cemetery is seeking a new member. There's a little bit more information about that in your bulletin. So do consider that a pretty important ministry. I invite you to take a nice breath. You made it here. You're starting a new week. God is the giver of all that is life and love and goodness. So find your breath. And then look around you and greet someone. Just very briefly say, I'm glad to see you today. That's great. Well, I just want to take a, a moment to say thank you for being such a gracious and helpful congregation and the recovery from my surgery. I had a few complications, uh, so recovery was a bit slower for me than I would have liked. And the homemade meals, cards filled with words of encouragement, gas cards, they really have given our family strength and encouragement in these weeks. Very appreciated. Christ's light shines so well through this congregation. And you live out your faith in Christ so well. And the care you've shown to me, I'm someone very new in the community, and the way you notice others and try to reach out to others in their time of need as well. We uh, don't know too much at this moment about my chemotherapy schedule. I have another oncologist appointment on Tuesday. So thank you for continuing to keep me in your prayers. And I do have cancer in my lymph nodes, so I'll be going through that chemotherapy process. We are so appreciative of this congregation and your love. I do plan to be in the office um, starting this week. Probably not full days, but I definitely have some energy and need to be doing tasks that I know how to do and connect with people like you. That gives me encouragement um, to feel a bit more normal as well. So thank you for your patience in that as well. So glad that we have had Pastor Chris here and so thankful for many of you who have done different things during this time too to make sure things have continued to go smoothly and to welcome people that are an important part of our community. Let's begin our time of worship with, yes, oh, oh yes, thank you, Luann. I had it written down even. Thank you, Luann. Luann has a book study coming up soon that we encourage you to think about being part of. It'll meet on Wednesday starting in a few weeks. Luann will give us the info on that. I would like to invite you to become a part of a book study discussion on a book called Sensible Shoes. It is the story of a spiritual journey of four very different women and how new friendships, old friendships, and the power of prayer impact their lives. Um, we're going to be meeting Wednesdays at 6 o'clock for about for an hour, um, starting February 9th, and we'll just plan for about six weeks is kind of the plan. Um, we'd like to, there's a sign up in the back. You can either contact me directly or sign up in the back. Uh, we'd, like, we'd like it probably by in the next week or so if you could to give us time to get you the book and the Come Fund is providing the book so if you uh, put it down we'll get you a book and hopefully you can get a little reading done before the night. So thank you. That's terrific. Good. Are there any other announcements? Yep. Cover the end. 
Well, I invite you to stand as you're able as we come before our Lord in the words of confession. We gather together in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. God of all mercy and consolation, come to the help of your people, turning us from our sin to live for you alone. Give us the power of your Holy Spirit, that we may confess our sin, receive your forgiveness, and grow into the fullness of Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Let's take a moment of silence, think about ways that we haven't paid attention to God or our neighbor, knowing that God desires to set us right and begin again. Let us pray. Most merciful God, we confess that we are captive to sin and cannot be ourselves. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done, and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways for the glory of your holy name. God, who is rich in mercy, loved us even when we were dead in sin and made us alive together in Christ Jesus. By grace you have been saved. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Almighty God, strengthen you with power through the Holy Spirit that Christ may live in your hearts through faith. Amen. We'll join together in our gathering hymn, Blessed Assurance, on the screen and 638 in the hymn.
grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all.
Gloria. Thank you, Belfair. bells that was beautiful the reading today is from 1st Corinthians chapter 12 now concerning spiritual gifts brothers and sisters I do not want you to be uninformed you know that you when you were pagans you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the Spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed, and no one can say, Jesus is Lord, except by the Holy Spirit. Now, there are a variety of gifts, but the same Spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the Spirit for the common good. To one is given through the Spirit the utterance of wisdom, and to another the utterance of knowledge according to the same Spirit. To another, faith by the same Spirit. To another, gifts of healing by the one Spirit. To, the, to another, the working of miracles. To another, prophecy. To another, the discernment of spirits to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit, 
who allots to each one individually, just as the Spirit chooses. The word of the Lord. Be to God. Invite our kids to come up to the steps. And those who are coming up, if you have change in your purse or your pockets, we are going to be collecting a noisy offering today, too. For a good earth village. them, find the word, and then show it to us, okay? Can you find the word that's in your gift bag there? Ah, some of them are kind of big words. We'll talk about them a little bit. What do you have? You have knowledge, okay? Can you keep holding on to that? Wisdom, faith. Proclamation, sharing God's word. Good. Step two. Prayer, healing. See, is there still one that didn't get open? Who wants to open another one? Okay. And then we have one big one that covers all of the gifts. You're going to help open that one. What was in that one? Or did you already find it? Miracles? Oh, what's in this big bag? What's in here? All these gifts are important. All these gifts come from God. All these gifts help us to be God's people. What word is this? Love. That's right. Can we hold up all of our words again so other people can see them? Okay. Wisdom, knowledge. That one is good. Proclamation. Miracles, prayer, and healing. Good. That's great. So God gives us all of these gifts that we can share God's love with one another, help people to know who Jesus is, and to just make a better community. So whether you're at home helping put toys away or reading a book to your younger sibling, maybe you... <laughs> Good job remembering your baptism. Maybe you are welcoming someone new at school or daycare. All of those are ways that we can live out our faith and these wonderful gifts that God has given to us. There are lots of gifts being used every day by God's people. And I'm thinking of some gifts that are used today in our congregation. Sunday school teachers will be sharing what gifts? Knowledge. Kindness. Musicians ring bells, and lots of people are singing, people who fix things, people who are good listeners to help others, people who pray, people who take care of people who are sick, people who are greeting others warmly. All these gifts make a difference, don't they? But what's the main gift again that holds all of them together? Can everybody say it? Love. God's love living in us. That's great. Love. I want you to help me clean up our bags, and then we're going to do a special prayer with our hands, and then I'm going to send you out to collect some change for the Bible camp, okay? So pick, you can keep the bag if you want to, but pick up the paper, Isaac, can you help? And put it back in the bags. Thank you. And then everyone, even the big people, are going to share a special prayer today. There we go. Thank you. Let's just put them over here. That's good. Okay, so we're all going to start with our hands. 
in front of us. Everyone can do this. Kind of like you're holding water, so try to cup them. Isaac, can you do this with your hands? And then take a moment to think about gifts that God has given to you. Gifts that God has put into your life. And then we're going to lift our hands up to God. Okay, that's good. Thank you, God, for the gifts given to each of the people here today. They make a difference. And now let's bring them like you're handing them to someone else. Lord, help us to use our gifts to love others and to take care of others. And now let's hold our hands like we usually do for prayer. And you can repeat after me. Dear Lord... Fill us with your spirit. Fill us with your spirit. Each one of us, one of us is, a gift of God. is a gift of God. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Take one of the buckets and spread out. See who has some coins for you. And when you're done, bring it back and put it in the big bucket. Okay, if someone forgot. Thank you so much for everyone who remembers they just has change in their pocket anyway. When they come back, can you give them a bulletin? Jonas, when they come back, can you give them a piece of candy? Stand for the gospel acclamation. Come. 
His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now, standing there were six stone jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. Jesus said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, Everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. The Gospel of our Lord. Praise you, O Christ. You may be seated. Well, all evidence to the contrary, our Gospel lesson is not about marriage although many would like it to be because we'd like to hear from Jesus about marriage. But ironically, he speaks very little about marriage, but he speaks more about divorce. Anyway, we are sharing this today because it is the first miracle, the first sign that Jesus does in the Gospel of John. And as you may recall, God, John's Gospel is different from the Synoptic Gospels. The synoptic gospels are those that summarize Jesus' life and teachings and miracles and such in a kind of chronological order. Whereas John is a little bit more ethereal and uh, otherworldly and symbolic uh, as well as very uh, beautiful. Anyway, John decides to uh, reveal Jesus in his uh, ministry after 30 years uh, with this miracle. Now, John calls it a sign. Maybe we should call it a sign, but it is also a miracle. Uh, you may ask, is it a big deal or is it splitting hairs that John says it's a sign? Well, it makes for a very fun conversation in the refectory and seminary to split that hair, but it is uh, a little less uh, edifying uh, in parish life. But that is how John uh, presents Jesus on the, sta the stage of the world as he begins his ministry, turning water into wine. It is a sign, not of his, necessarily of the demonstration of his power, like feeding the 5,000, uh, healing some blind person or deaf person or walking on water. This has a, uh, uh, goes beyond the superficial or the obvious meaning and uh, it goes to a spiritual level. And here Jesus is pointing to the glory of God that has come in his ministry. Now, this miracle by Jesus is uh, uh, not done for the benefit of all to see. He doesn't go uh, like this and like this and wave a staff over the water. He just says, put water in there and take it to the uh, bridegroom. It is uh, for that reason that uh, uh, the steward questions the bridegroom or the host that uh, uh, why didn't you serve the best wine first? But that helps get us to the uh, deeper, more significant uh, and spiritual meaning of this sign. Just as the wine Jesus created in those jugs was superior to the first wine, the inferior wine, so also is the salvation of that Jesus brings into and for the world. 
it is superior to the salvation provided by Moses and the law. That is the sign that comes with Jesus. Well, that's quite a leap, isn't it? Superior wine, superior salvation. Well, that is the reason John begins his gospel this way, in little insignificant old Cana. It's Jesus' debut. It might be like, uh, like uh, I don't mean to be too irreverent, uh, of Jesus, or no, of Clark Kent taking off his suit and uh, displaying the Superman logo to Jimmy Olsen and Lois Lane and Perry White. And when he opened his shirt and performed this uh, sign, his disciples believed. Believed that he had taken the stage as the uh, Son of God. Another symbolic meaning of this sign is how generous God is. They were six or seven jars, 20 to 30 gallons each. That was more than enough for the rite of purification that the Jews would have observed uh, coming to that uh, wedding. Uh, one jar would have been enough for that wedding. Uh, six was more than enough for a huge wedding. And this was probably not that kind of wedding. After all, the Jewish rite of purification with that water was not, uh, did not have a hygiene, hygiene uh, purpose behind it. There was no soap, soap no scrubbing. Uh, it was more like the Brill Cream slogan, a little dab will do ya. Jesus was making a point about how generous and how abundant God is when he gives us with the Son, with salvation, and with the water turned to wine. There was enough wine there to float a boat. 180 gallons, approximately. 750 bottles, approximately. A second symbol beyond the abundance is that uh, Jesus is fulfilling uh, Old Testament prophecies by comparing the kingdom of God to a marriage feast that has no end. Isaiah does that as are there other um, uh, sightings in the Old Testament? And Amos even went this far by saying in the ninth chapter about uh, God's presence, grapes will grow faster than the wine can be made and mountains will drip with sweet wine and the hills will flow with it. So Jesus comes and Old Testament prophecies are uh, fulfilled and it means that in very graphic ways life is to be and life will become in Jesus and the pouring out of the gifts it will become a celebration that's the point of this sign it's nice that there is the uh, uh, expectation and now the fulfillment of that. <coughs> Jesus will purify us with his own death on a cross. And we no longer have to rely on and perform uh, hollow acts of purification <coughs> or of washing of ourselves. We only need to believe that Jesus has done this for me and for you and for everyone out of the goodness of God's heart and grace. Well, if that's the message, what is the response? What should we do uh, as a reaction to being so blessed? One word answer is celebrate. Remember, 
Jesus is Emmanuel, and Emmanuel means God with us. And here we are encouraged to rejoice. And we, one of our favorite Christmas carols is joy to the world. Let us sing. Let us not focus so much on the do's or even the don'ts of religion or following of the law. Let us recognize the dawning of a new day in Jesus. As one preacher put it, by faith in Jesus, we have more important concerns than rules to live by. Now we have someone to live for. If water was the symbol of purification for the people uh, and the law with the law of Moses, then the wine is the symbol of Jesus' bringing grace, joy, and truth, and peace to God's people. It's legalism versus grace. William Barclay, who is someone that many of you in Bible studies with pastors over the years may be familiar with, he's a biblical scholar, he preaches more to a laity uh, in terms that are easily understood. And uh, William Barclay says, the New Testament is the book of joy. The Greek word for joy appears 60 times in the New Testament, and the verb rejoice appears 72 times in the New Testament. So if God wants and Jesus brings uh, joy and encourages rejoicing, then in so many ways and words, John is saying, don't turn wine back into water. Don't suck the joy out of life or out of church. Now, that doesn't mean we can be or need to be blind to the real uh, problems of the world and of our lives and of our bodies. We can't ignore those realities and we can't ignore all the ways we have created to destroy people's lives, souls, spirits, or bodies. But we do need to have confidence that God will be victor over, over all of those things and that God will accomplish his mission and Jesus will bring the kingdom of God into our midst and we will enjoy it and we will share it. Therefore, the trademark of our lives and of our worship and our churches should not be one of doom and gloom, but of joy and peace and grace. That is a choice. That is a decision we need to make. So, let us believe in this season of epiphany that Jesus comes to reveal to the world God's power and in the changing of water into wine, Jesus announces and kicks off the celebration of his arrival and God's presence in our midst. That is a wonderful sign. Amen. Let us stand to sing.
seated. As we come to God in prayer, let's be mindful of your posture, creating an openness. As the Spirit of the Lord has been poured out upon us, may we notice those gifts of joy and peace and hope. As we pray for one another, the world, and all that God has made. Holy God, you bless us with your presence in each routine of life. Your care and concern is complete. We give you thanks, God, for the water turned to wine, for the miracle that allows the party to continue. Jesus' first sign, which is not a disease healed, not an authority challenged, you will get there, he will get there. But first it is the wine. Sympathy for the host, deference to your mother, consideration of your friends, for the laughter and music to continue a while longer, for the warm glow of friendship and goodness. Lord, sometimes we feel the burden of needing to ask for and participate in the really big miracles, the transformations of systems and lives which are so desperately needed. Sometimes, Lord, we feel a guilt in asking for smaller things, personal desires, moments of lightness or joy or ease that seem frivolous. And yet here you are in the beginning, giving us abundance and joy, laughter, music a sign of who you are in your kingdom. Give us eyes to see the ways you continue to reveal yourself in small yet important ways that bring light, laughter, and joy. God of grace. God of promises, we thank you for the gift of life and moments of celebration and rejoicing. Help us to trust you as the provider of the gifts which have no end. Faith, hope, and love. We pray for our relationships. Help us to honor our commitments and be gentle with those we love. Parents, spouses, children, dear friends. As you have forgiven us, help us to practice forgiveness. Bring healing to wounded relationships and the anguish of loneliness. God of grace. Yeah. Emmanuel, as the trivial and tragic trials of life descend on us, remind us of your presence and the surprise of joy and gratitude in the midst of suffering. As Jesus provided generously in moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing and companionship for those in need this day. We pray especially for Calvin, Raymond, Andrew, Connie, Todd, Carol, Duane, Jerry, Nancy, and those on our hearts. Provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all seeking shelter, all who need peace. We pray comfort for all who mourn. We pray for Ramona's family, Priscilla's family, the family of Norma, and others who we know are walking in sorrow. Grant courage to the discouraged. You see us for who we are and you delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life changes. Remind us that nothing can separate us from your love. God of grace. God, you bless us through the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. By your Holy Spirit, activate within your church 
gifts of faith, teaching, and healing. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, and geographic boundaries. God of grace. Into your hands, loving Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy through your Son, Jesus Christ. Amen. At this time, we'll receive the offering. Thank you for sharing your gifts. Many of you give online. We're grateful for that. We welcome those who are watching online as well today. In homes and care centers, may Christ find you. May you hear messages that you need to hear today as well. darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being for your word of life, O God. We give you thanks and praise. By your word you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O God. Through Jesus, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us to witness. Forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love. For your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and grace. Send your spirit of truth, O oh God. Rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O God, draw near to all who call on you, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom with you and the Holy Spirit be honor and glory forever. Amen. I invite you to rise as you're able as we come together in the words that our Lord Jesus has taught. Let us pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done. Give us the day of the day and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you with grace and mercy. The Lord look upon you with favor and grant you peace. Amen. We invite the kids to come up and get an instrument as we sing our 
Sunday song, Love Divine, a love song, a great song.